This presentation will discuss using hydrogen peroxide to treat various fish parasites. Some of you may already be familiar with the methods I am going to outline here. I want to stress that hydrogen peroxide is just another tool for combating fish parasites. I am not trying to portray hydrogen peroxide as a cure-all to solve all of your fish disease problems. So, why hydrogen peroxide? Where did this come from? Well, it all started when I read a study regarding the use of hydrogen peroxide to treat marine velvet disease in Pacific Threadfin. The abstract of this study can be seen on the screen. If you read the highlighted part, it's basically saying that a 30-minute hydrogen peroxide bath at 75 or 150 parts per million will greatly reduce infestation levels. When a second bath was done six days later, it reduced the number of parasites on the fish to a non-detectable level. In short, two hydrogen peroxide baths cured the fish of velvet. Through my own independent research, I was able to verify that in addition to marine velvet disease, a single 30-minute 150 ppm hydrogen peroxide bath can also provide temporary relief for Brooklynella, uranema, and flukes, which are monogenians. The one caveat here is peroxide will burn or greatly irritate any redness on a fish, so hydrogen peroxide should not be used on fish with uranema showing red sores. One thing that really attracted me to hydrogen peroxide is its widespread availability. I can't tell you how many people I've helped with fish disease problems who didn't have the necessary medications on hand to treat or to even provide temporary relief to buy their fish some time. You can find hydrogen peroxide almost anywhere. Drug stores, grocery stores, Walmart or Target, even some dollar stores. It just needs to be 3% USP grade hydrogen peroxide, as shown here. You can use stronger concentrations, such as 6% hydrogen peroxide, but you must cut the dosage accordingly. How to do a hydrogen peroxide bath? Well, you need the following. First, 3% hydrogen peroxide, USP grade, a glass bowl or food grade plastic bucket, syringe for measuring out the peroxide, and a measuring cup for adding salt water to the bowl or bucket, a spoon for mixing, optional are peroxide test strips which can be obtained on Amazon. The peroxide test strips are especially useful if you're going to use the same bath water for multiple batches of fish to ensure that the peroxide concentration stays above 100 ppm at all times. Directions for the bath. One, add salt water using the measuring cup to bowl or bucket. Obviously you will want the water to be the same temperature and salinity as the tank the fish is coming from. Keep track of how much water is added in cups, liters, or gallons. And secondly, using a syringe, add 3% hydrogen peroxide. Dosing instructions to achieve 150 ppm are as follows. 1.25 milliliters of 3% H2O2 per one cup of salt water, 5 milliliters of 3% H2O2 per one liter of salt water, or 20 milliliters of 30% H2O2 per one gallon of salt water. After peroxide has been added, stir the water using a metal or food grade plastic spoon. You can also use an air stone to provide oxygen during the bath and help mix the peroxide into the water. Contrary to popular belief, gas exchange does not significantly degrade high concentration peroxide. Now it's time to add the fish. It's okay to use a heater, but probably not necessary since the bath only lasts 30 minutes. Observe closely and remove the fish if showing any signs of distress. The vast majority handle it just fine. After 30 minutes, remove the fish and transfer into a quarantine tank for further treatment. But wait, it gets even better. You can actually use hydrogen peroxide in conjunction with tank transfer method Tank transfer method involves moving fish to a different quarantine tank every 72 hours. The weakness to this method has always been that it only treats marine ick. However, if you look to the far right, I have incorporated peroxide into tank transfer method to make the protocol more all-inclusive. Remember that study where two peroxide baths spaced six days apart eliminated velvet? Turns out that process also treats Brooklynella and in some cases even flukes and other parasites. You'll still need to transfer the fish every 72 hours, as outlined here, to eliminate ick. 
Unfortunately, it appears peroxide has limited efficacy against ick because those trophonts burrow in under a fissious outer skin layer, which is out of reach for the peroxide. This is why the 72-hour transfers are still required. Hydrogen peroxide works best at eliminating surface parasites such as velvet and brooklynella. I've saved the best for last. Some of you have probably dosed hydrogen peroxide in your reef tank to combat nuisance algae. Well, Jessica on my forum has expanded upon this method to treat, and in some cases even completely eliminate, various parasites in a reef tank environment. On the screen you will see Jessica's dosing regimen. Obviously using a dosing pump will help tremendously here. You want to start off light by dosing H2O2 1 ml per 8 gallons every 12 hours. This will help your corals and inverts adjust to the presence of peroxide in the water. By week 2 you can increase the dosage to 1 ml per 8 gallons every 8 hours. And by week 4 1 ml per 5 gallons every 8 hours with overnight dosing. Things you need to know about this method. First, it's not 100% reef safe, especially for inverts that are sensitive to changing water chemistry. Secondly, peroxide is a strong oxidizer and kills the good with the bad, so your tank's microbiome, especially good bacteria, may take a hit. Third, running a UV sterilizer and utilizing a dosing pump will increase this method's effectiveness. Fourth, it is best to begin this treatment at the first sign of parasites, the longer you wait and the worse the infestation gets, the less likely that this method will be able to get a handle on the problem in time. And finally, in-tank peroxide dosing has been shown to eliminate uranema heteromarinum and is currently being tested against the more commonly encountered uranema marinum. Uranema causes the red sores sometimes seen on chromis, antheus, and has no fallow period, so being able to eliminate it through peroxide dosing could be a big deal. Thank you for watching this presentation. Please visit my website and forum for more information.